Are we good? I honestly don't even want to do this. Like, why am I the one who has to share this information with the world? Why am I the one that has to do this? Why am I the one that has to go through something that that is so dark and disturbing and something that's really going to change society and relationship dynamics forever? Most people aren't aware that there is a sugar baby, sugar daddy industry. There's this underworld happening in every city across the world and how this is playing a role in your relationship or if you're single, your ability to date attractive quality women. Where are all the other major media outlets? NBC, CNBC, Fox News, Vice News. This is the stuff they're supposed to be covering. Why am I the one, the little guy here, who has to put myself out there to try and uncover this stuff? It's not on the internet. Right, there's very little that will ever go this deep. I, I couldn't find it, it's not there. Everything about wh what's online is about how to use the platform, how to make money from the platform, how to find your sugar baby. There's nothing that actually shares and exposes the reality of what's actually happening. And most people who are on the platform are completely unaware of the reality of what happens to them in the future. They're just focused on instant gratification and pleasure and fast cash. They are not interested at all and how this is going to impact themselves in the future, how this is going to impact society and relationship and the value of men and women permanently. So I infiltrated the whole sugar baby, sugar daddy industry. And you're just not going to believe what happened next. It's just so stupid. Like, I, I just can't. A few weeks ago, I was working out with a friend, discussing innovative ways to meet quality women. While we were chatting, he reluctantly told me about this website where you could find hundreds of attractive women who are eager to go out with you, but you have to pay to go out with them and well, you can take it from there. I thought he was joking, something like that couldn't exist, could it? And if it did, how have I or the authorities never heard of it? I was intrigued to say the least, I mean who would it be as a single man at the time? Could there really be a sexual underworld going on in every city, not just in America, but across the world, where the highest bidder could sleep with and date the most attractive women? That night, he texted me a link to the site. Spurred by impulse, I took the plunge, immersing myself into this social experiment by creating an account on this mysterious site to get an inside look at what the heck is going on. As a coach and influencer to men around the world, I felt it was my duty to delve into this uncharted territory to filter through the truths and myths of this platform to uncover any potential benefits for my clients, readers, and viewers. After all, if there's a hotspot where attractive women congregate, then it makes sense that men should be aware of it, at least. What is sugar dating and how does it work? Now, before we delve too deeply into the dark waters of my little experiment, it's important to clarify what it is we're talking about in the first place. Sugar dating, as it's commonly called, a rich, typically older man, a sugar daddy, provides sponsorship to young, attractive women, sugar babies, typically in the form of monthly cash allowance, travel, shopping, fine dining, or rent assistance. The history of the phrase sugar daddy comes from the caramel lollipop made by Robert Welch Jr. in the early 90s. 1800s, who used the slogan, a wealth of sweetness, referring to every lick. The lollipop is shaped long and rectangular, which may have led to the sexual innuendo. What does a sugar baby do in return? Typically, they offer companionship and often sexual intimacy. It's that simple. However, it's important to point out that not all sugar baby and sugar daddy relationships look the same. The context and paradigm of these relationships are as variable as the people who engage in them. I discovered older divorcees interested in dating younger men, women who were uninterested in financial compensation, and simply wanted a partner who had his life together, yet of course, the majority are women who made it abundantly clear that every PPM or pay per meet would have a cost of $400 to $1,000. If this isn't addressed and agreed upon early on, you'll never hear from that girl again. 
most sugar babies are not interested in just one encounter. It takes a lot of effort to message, coordinate, meet up, and become emotionally involved with someone. If she's a sugar baby looking for real long-term value, then she's going to want consistency and may not engage in anything sexual until you've proven that you can afford her PPM with ease. There were individuals looking for discreet sexual relationships, platonic companionship, partners willing to accommodate their hectic business and travel schedule, and everything in between. Seeing this diversity among the sugar dating community, the fact still remained. No matter how well you spin it, the overwhelming majority of the people on the platform were there for one reason. To exchange intimate and sexual companionship for money. And despite the surprising abundance of sugar dating sites available, the overwhelming majority of individuals flocked to a single platform. A sugar dating site called SeekingArrangement.com, which has been updated to just Seeking.com. As soon as I logged on, hundreds of sugar babies popped up, and those were only the women who met my specific criteria in my zip code. New women were joining every hour as I would hit refresh and a new sugar baby was born. And I found myself wondering just how many women are doing this and more importantly, why? Startling facts about the sugar daddy and sugar baby lifestyle on seeking arrangement. First, using Google's keyword tool reveals that the keyword how to find a sugar daddy gets between 10,000 and 100,000 searches per month in the United States. However, the keyword how to find a sugar baby gets only 100 to 1,000 searches per month. That's more than a 100x difference of women searching for a sugar daddy versus men searching for a sugar baby. And looking at the data from SeekingArrangement.com itself, we discover that of the 10 million, yes, 10 million active users users inside the United States, there are three sugar babies for every one sugar daddy, meaning that there are more than 6.7 million sugar babies in the United States, and that's just on this one site of many that exists just like it. A quick glance at this number doesn't appear too alarming. After all, 6.7 million is only 2% of the population, but when you dive a bit deeper, you realize just how significant this number actually is. According to the US Census, there are roughly 113 million people in the United States between the ages of 18 and 44 and roughly 51% of this population is female. So now we have an estimated 60,180,000 women between the ages of 18 and 44. And of these women, roughly 6.7 million are on seeking arrangement. This means that of the women inside of the average man's dating pool, based on the age of 18 to 44, more than 10% of them are actively or have been sugar babies in the past. And that number is only growing by the quarter and year. But as I began to explore this underworld, I couldn't help but wonder, how will this affect dating culture as we know it? Does seeking arrangement give men an advantage or disadvantage? My mind started spinning as I checked my message inbox in the 60 minutes since I'd created my account. I'd sent out five messages to sugar babies and staring back at me from my dimly lit monitor were five almost immediate positive, emotionally excited messages. WTF, this was new. I've actively used dating apps and websites for years and I'd never experienced this high and quick of a response rate, let alone responses that were this positive and forward about meeting up. On Tinder, Bumble, or Hinge, where the dating market is skewed heavily in women's favor as the selector, most men, even successful men, are something of a disposable item on those traditional dating apps. Responses go unread for months, matches go cold in a matter of days, and on the rare occasion, you do strike up a conversation with someone whom you're actually attracted to, the odds of it turning into a date hover around 15%, and that's actually good if you know what you're doing. Yet here I was, with five different women trying to meet up with me, and then something happened that perfectly illustrates just how profoundly sugar dating changes the dating dynamics for men. As I was scrolling through the list of women in my area, I came across a woman I'd met the week before on Tinder, who even had the same profile photos. After matching with and messaging her, she'd been short in her responses, cold, and left me on red. So as a fun test, I sent her a message on seeking to see her response. And the very next day, I couldn't believe it. The same girl shot back a response, but this time eager and excited, and even asked if I wanted to meet up for drinks the very next day. Needless to say, on seeking, women treat men differently. Responses are prompt and kind, even if she has little idea what you look like or who you actually are. 
Sure, there were a few innocent women who made it clear they were not interested in a transactional relationship. They simply wanted a man with financial stability and the capacity to hold down a job longer than her ex-boyfriends ever have. However, this type of woman was rare on Seeking. Most of the women would become upset and block you if you revealed that your intention was that you don't want a pet, but to actually date her like a boyfriend and you're using the app just like you would Tinder or Bumble or Hinge. This was a world where the unspoken rule was clear. The currency of affection came with a price tag. And within a few days, I had a dozen phone numbers, scheduled multiple dates, and had countless women disrupting my workday every few hours asking, when are you free? When are you available to meet up with women that I wasn't interested in? Whereas if it was on any other dating app, you would be really excited to meet those women. But on Seeking, it appears that men or sugar daddies are suddenly placed in the driver's seat, calling the shots and having their pick of sugar babies without any sense of scarcity or fear of rejection which is uncommon and not normal on regular dating apps. I was showered in compliments and praise so frequently and so fervently that I began to feel like I was at a strip club as if it was the job of these women to make men feel respected and desired. There must be a catch. It was a small taste of what I imagine most attractive women have felt on a daily basis since middle school. My options seemed limitless, but something didn't feel right in my stomach, and I wondered how far down this rabbit hole I would go. As I browsed through hundreds of seemingly attractive women, I began to doubt the authenticity of the profiles I was seeing. The majority had their photos slightly blurred, taken from a distance, or they're wearing sunglasses, or their gaze is looking away so you can only see the side of their faces, and you don't see the full frontal shot. It seemed as if though they were attempting to be sugar babies while maintaining a low profile from society, perhaps from people close to them like their family, their friends, or their ex, or hopefully not, their current romantic partner. Surely the women that I was talking to were the woman that I actually saw in the photos, right? A high quality smart woman would never use a site like this, or would she? Am I seeking a sugar baby, a stripper, or a girl next door? What surprised me most about my time on Seeking Arrangement was how seemingly normal most of the women were. It wasn't like I was talking with uneducated women, amateur porn stars, or drug-addled strippers trying to earn money in between their photo shoots. Some of these women I even had mutual friends with on social media. In fact, most of the women I met seemed like your typical girl next door, mostly worried about their tuition, student loans, making rent, or just wanted extra cash to fuel a better lifestyle. Many of them were college educated and some of them from top tier universities and in several cases held graduate degrees. I was curious, but still hesitant. This can't be real, I convinced myself. And to my naive and innocent mind, there was simply no chance in hell that the women with whom I was scheduled to meet up with were actually them. To think that this many women were being undercover sugar babies was unbelievable. I assumed that this whole thing was a giant catfish scheme, and my date, despite what she presented online with nice photos, would indeed show up with her face covered in tattoos, armed with something sharp. For days I engaged in an internal debate about whether I should actually pursue this experiment any further. Sure, I didn't want to be disappointed, but there was a deeper, more potent emotion fueling my hesitancy. I didn't want to believe that so many women we're now engaged in something that felt so wrong. The reality of this was harder to accept than I'd expected. It ran contrary to my beliefs and expectations, a harsh contrast to the woman I thought I knew. Of course, the women I desire sometimes go out to bars on the weekends, have drinks with girlfriends, and the occasional bachelorette party to Vegas or Scottsdale, but that's like the extent of their debauchery. And then they go back to normal life. Surely, the quality women wouldn't be found on a website like Seeking Arrangement. They had reputations to protect, standards to maintain, and fathers to be accountable to, and an already abundant pool of men begging to date them on dating apps and social media and just their day-to-day -day lives, right? But I'd come this far, and I wanted to know the truth. I wanted to know the true realities facing men today and the potential problems posed by the now transactional nature of dating, romance, and intimacy. And so I replied to a sugar baby. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. My unusual experiences and lessons learned meeting sugar babies from seeking arrangement. As I found myself sitting at the bar waiting for my date, Megan, I felt a sense of nervousness and unease creeping through me. 
Looking around the bar, I noticed a brawny, middle-aged, just out of prison looking man eyeing me a few times for nearly half an hour while I got there early and waited. Shit, I thought, is that her bodyguard or him? Was he going to come kick my ass if I didn't fork over a bunch of cash at the end of this meeting? But I didn't bring cash. What have I gotten myself into? Should I make a run for it before she arrives? What's going on? What kind of world have I entered? As the minutes passed by and the man staring at me quietly left the bar, my disbelief was replaced by a little bit of calmness. But as soon as that happened, my date entered, Megan, and she sat across from me. It struck me that beneath that attractive face, she possessed an air of normalcy, a certain intriguing quality that made her relatable. We'd been chatting for over an hour, yet not once has she brought up the topics of money or seeking or the concept of an allowance. The interaction was rather ordinary, a stark contrast to its unconventional way of meeting. The evening drew to a close without a hint of the expected theatrics, no transactional exchange for intimacy, no probing into my supposed worth or what I might be inclined to offer her. She did, however, ask about my profession, but isn't that normal when meeting someone? There was an air of curious fascination, but it was void of the mercenary undertones that I expected. As I laid in bed that night, thinking back on the experience, my confusion only compounded. Did I just date an escort and kind of enjoy it? And surely that date was an anomaly, right? I thought to myself it was a fluke. All the other women on Seeking are trashy lowlifes that I'd expected, right? So I decided to roll the dice and continue the experiment just to figure out what the hell is going on here. After several months of this experiment, I found that nearly 80% of the women with whom I went out with eventually would bring up money between the first and third encounter, expressing their desire for a very specific dollar amount or monthly allowance. There was even a girl I was talking to months earlier where our communication had eventually fizzled out, but then I found her on the site seeking and she responded to me quickly, which I found amusing considering just the power of status. I was the same guy just on a different platform. We went out a few times and I thought we were dating, but since our reconnection came from seeking, she ultimately wanted money and left when I said no. It was like all the dates, laughs, sharing of our past and futures and goals and the emotional connection and intimacy developed was actually just a front to drop the money question. I never heard from her again. What I felt was that these women wanted to be around successful men living a higher class lifestyle, participating in social activities and events that they could not experience on their own. As for the other 20% of women, as long as I paid for a fun night out, the conversation of money never really surfaced. Perhaps this was because I was already spending money on the date, just not directly handing it over to them. For a few rare women on Seeking, it felt more like dating than a mutually beneficial relationship, which is AKA give me money for my time and intimacy and sex. However, Make no mistake, the lion's share of women I encountered on Seeking Arrangement, despite their linguistic gymnastics about the topic and how they would go around it and beat around the bush, were clearly seeking a transactional relationship, a clear trade, a financial compensation for sexual intimacy. Following such conversations, our paths ended right there. Yet these interactions seemed to deepen my pursuit of finding answers, leaving me grappling with the perplexing question, what in the world was truly unfolding here for men and women, and why is no one talking about this? These were the same sorts of women I regularly met at social venues, the same types of women I casually dated, the same types of women I'd fallen in love with many times over. Yet here I was, sitting across from many women, casually naming a price they were willing to accept for sex, openly discussing the monetary value they place on the most intimate part of their lives, no different than if we were talking about what's your favorite food or movie. Don't they know this is probably illegal? I thought to myself every time. But to be honest, I really think the main reason that I experienced as much unpaid success as I did was that I'd spent the better part of a decade refining and honing my dating and social skills. Learning how to hook a woman's interest, be non-needy, pass tests, physically escalate, sexualize interactions, and create an emotionally high adventurous time that I think few of these women had experienced before. Without these skills, I have no doubt that all of my interactions would have resulted in women shamelessly trying to convert me into their loyal sugar daddy and requesting a sugar baby allowance at the end of each date. 
If you want to learn how to develop these skills and successfully date high quality women without giving up your hard earned income and having to pay a sugar baby's monthly allowance and all the dinner dates associated with all that nonsense, then you can grab a copy of the Dating Playbook for Men, which is available on Amazon. I've sold over 150,000 copies. I believe it's the best book on the subject. You can get that on Amazon or Audible. And for those who want more, uh, feel free to watch my video training on becoming a stronger, grounded man, increasing your confidence, and reclaiming your personal power. You can access that training at knowledgeformen.com slash SA. Knowledgeformen.com slash SA. So even though I paid for dinners and drinks just like any normal date I do, I noticed that the women who never asked me for money seemed attracted to the allure of status, power, and the lifestyle that financial success can bring. Many of these women have been with broke boyfriend after broke boyfriend who promised them the world but never actually followed through. So they really just didn't have the means to take her out and enjoy some of these luxuries that money might offer without stressing about it. But based on my conversations with men who have partaken in the sugar baby lifestyle further, like the friend I was working out with, and antidotal reports from the field of my own experiences, I've realized that my personal experience is most certainly the exception, not the rule, okay? I was playing the experiment with an upper advantage. I was a former dating coach who had the skills necessary to date attractive women without using a site like Seeking Arrangement and having to front cash allowances to get a woman out on a date. But even as I found myself on a second or third date with some of these women I met on the site, there was an inescapable elephant in the room that was really gnawing on her mind and mine. How could I knowingly and willingly date a woman who was by all reasonable expectations likely engaged in other sexual transactional relationships that were tantamount to escorting or even prostitution? How could I cope with the fact that the sweet and seemingly innocent women with whom I just shared an incredible evening with probably had a long roster of men she was planning to date and potentially sleep with for cash the next weekend and God forbid the very same night. My mind was racing and it led me to this question what is the difference between a prostitute escort sex worker and a shirt so let's ask oxford and my man webster dictionary to break this down for us a prostitute is a person particularly a woman who engages in sexual activity for payment an escort is someone who is hired to accompany someone to a social event or a sex worker who arranges to meet clients by appointment rather than working in a brothel or on the street a sex worker a person whose work involves sex acts. Sugar baby, a younger woman who provides romantic companionship or sexual intimacy to a wealthy older person in return for financial compensation. Wait a minute, these all sound the same. It's sex for money, essentially. Although escort seems to have two options, pay to hang out or pay for sex. Let's be honest, on a sugar dating site, the majority of it is for sex. A sugar daddy might initially pay to hang out or accompany him to some sort of social event, but if a man is paying an attractive, youthful woman for her time, sex eventually comes up. Look, this sugar baby thing is essentially just a slick repackage job. It's like they've slapped a fresh coat of paint on something frowned upon in society and resold it as something sweet and fun and cute. Like, they're trying to convince young women that it's all good. In fact, it's a blast. It's, it's a fun way to get in touch with their wild side and get paid for it even. It's almost like they're pulling a Vegas move on them, you know? Like the whole what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas shtick where all kinds of sketchy behavior suddenly becomes all fun and games and normalized. I just couldn't believe this. How is this happening in society? And few people are talking about it. It's got my brain firing on all cylinders and I couldn't stop myself from thinking. How does the systematization of unfettered access to sugar dating affect men, women, and the traditional dating paradigm into the future? Sugar babies, a blessing or a curse for men's modern dating and relationships. As I continued my descent deeper into the underbelly of this provocative and baffling underworld, I began to wonder, will being a sugar baby one day become as normal as having an online dating profile like Tinder or Bumble? How will the proliferation of sugar dating and seeking arrangement affect your average man in the 21st century who is unable to pay these hefty monthly allowances? Especially for men who have become stagnant, purposeless, and lost their masculine edge. Men who are not working on their personal development, living adventurous lives, staying in good physical shape, and increasing their income and developing their social skills. I have strong reason to believe that for the men who are not growing personally and professionally, 
it will be even harder, if not damn near impossible, for them to enter into relationships with attractive women from this day forward. After all, what compels a woman to entertain relationships with men barely scraping by, possessing little ambition when she can monetize her time and intimacy, selling them to men who can offer much more alluring experiences and financial reward? And for the men who do possess the necessary resources and financial liquidity to maintain such a lifestyle, what are the implications? How does the one-dimensional, transactional quality of their relationships influence them? How might it shape their future prospects if they wish to foster a truly authentic relationship in the future? Is it conceivable for them to revert to a reality where they can't simply purchase what they desire? Where emotional involvement becomes unavoidable? If we're being honest, one of the primary drivers behind most men's efforts to improve themselves and increase their income is that they believe these improvements will increase their sexual value and garner the attention of higher quality women. But when the only factor at play is the size of a man's bank account, will he still feel the urge to pursue higher levels of personal, emotional, and spiritual development? Or will he view himself as nothing more than a sex-hungry walking ATM whose sole purpose is to earn more so that he can buy pleasure, intimacy, and affection from the women that he really desires? If relationships increasingly revolve around a man's wealth and his ability to provide lavish experiences, it is unlikely that men will feel motivated to engage in the necessary internal work required to sustain a meaningful relationship with a high-quality woman. Consequently, if he happens to encounter a woman outside of sugar dating with whom he genuinely wants to have a relationship with, he may find himself unprepared, having become accustomed to the artificial cheerfulness, sexual allure, and entertaining facade of a sugar baby, in exchange for cash, of course and so he may lack the skills necessary to engage in a genuine relationship. Unlike the sugar-coated interactions he's accustomed to, real-world relationships require the ability to navigate the complexities of emotions and effective communication. The more I thought about it, the more I realized just how slippery the slope of sugar dating really is. It's all too common for a man to believe that the fastest way to date high-quality women is, for lack of a better phrase, to get richer by trying. And this can lead to a dark and dangerous road for men, with the financial means to pursue a sugar baby where numerous unexpected pitfalls await them. The dark side of sugar dating for men, compromising professional and personal security for pleasure. Over the past few years, countless men at the pinnacles of professional success have been brought to ruin, justly and unjustly, by their uncontrollable sex drives. Although many of these cases were the result of flagrant moral failures and manipulation on the man's side, think Harvey Weinstein, others have been unfairly manipulated and blackmailed by women seeking to elevate their standing through any means necessary. And the second you step into the sugar dating scene, you're playing with fire. You gotta stop and think, what kind of life situation has this woman landed in that she's listing herself on a bidding site? Is she coming from a place of good mental health, moral values, and self-respect and self-love, or is she in survival mode and you're the target? I'll let you be the judge. Although many sugar dating interactions are consensual and transparent, the whole scene is a potential minefield of cunning women with deceptive practices that can lead to dangerous consequences for men personally and professionally. As the saying goes, not everything that glitters is gold. The most perfunctory glance at the reality of sugar dating should make the risk apparent. Even in romantic relationships that were once filled with love and they even have kids together and they have affection, it's all too common to see women resort to blackmail, false allegations, and slander to gain leverage over the man when the relationship ends or it's in court. Men have also done the same. So why would you expect anything less in a relationship that is, by its very nature, driven by the number of dollars that you possess and how much you're willing to give her? To be blunt, sugar babies are primarily invested in the financial worth that you bring to the table, not you as a man. That's an afterthought. So what happens when you decide to withdraw financial support, move on to a new sugar baby, or simply end the relationship for something more real? The retaliation from the jilted sugar baby now put back in survival mode in life based off of a decision that you made can put the man's social reputation, professional career, and personal relationships in great danger. How can you be so confident that she doesn't have any compromising pictures, information, videos, or messages from you? How can you be certain that she doesn't possess some sort of leverage 
that she could use to continue tapping into your pockets even after she decides to stop offering her time and intimacy in return. Although we all like to appeal to the better angles of our nature, the truth is, entering into the sugar dating ecosystem opens men up to potentially disastrous personal and professional fallout. And the long-term stress of all of this that it could create is often greater than the short-term pleasure that that relationship provided. It's hard to enjoy yourself with a beautiful woman when you're constantly worried about her true motives. The what-ifs of sugar dating are a real concern that far too many men ignore when they're entering the whole sugar bowl because of all the excitement and dopamine and pleasure that's happening. What if you meet someone in the real world and decide to leave sugar dating behind, only to have her threaten to share lewd photos of you with your entire office or post them on social media or on adult sites or to send compromising videos to your new romantic partner. Even worse, what if she resorts to false allegations of non-consensual sexual activity? Considering the intimate nature of a sugar relationship, a vindictive sugar baby could claim that a sexual encounter was forced upon her. The burden of proof then falls on you to demonstrate your innocence in a he said, she said scenario where your fluids may lay inside her as evidence. While many sugar dating relationships are conducted ethically, it's critical to be aware of the potential for manipulation, deceit, and blackmail on such a site. These deceptive practices can have serious consequences far beyond the immediate financial costs, including legal issues, damage to personal relationships, and public and professional humiliation. It's another sobering reminder of the potential hazards lurking beneath the sugar-coated veneer of sugar dating. Number two, the stagnant waters of sugar dating a dopamine-driven barrier to personal development. The world of sugar dating, with its glamour and instant gratification, can often make a man feel like a kid at a candy shop. After years of backbreaking work to achieve financial success at the expense of his personal life and even romantic relationships, it can feel like you've finally arrived to the place you've been striving to reach with all the sugar babies vying for your attention. After all, for most straight men, the prospect of having a swarm of attractive women who are fawning over your attention and willing to satisfy your needs is something of a fantasy. Like, it feels like end game, right? Like you've made it, like it was all finally worth it, all the hard work. However, like a drug, the dynamic serves as a means to escape from reality. And the most pernicious part of the whole experience is that it feels like you've earned it, that you deserve this and you are above the other lesser men beneath you, that, that you belong to this level now. This is where it's at. After all, you put in years of hard work and sacrifice to achieve the financial means necessary to support a sugar baby or two or 10. Isn't this your reward? But in reality, the dopamine you earn from sugar dating is analogous to the dopamine you earn from buying cocaine. It didn't require direct effort, relevant skills, or sacrifice. It didn't require emotional intelligence, conversational skills, or the risk of rejection. Simply, sufficient funds in your bank account to not fret about a monthly allowance or PPM fee. And just like the drug, the dopamine high from sexual encounters with younger beautiful women that you did not have access to before creates an addictive loop that keeps you coming back for more and no other relationship can feel quite like it. And of course, you're spending more and having to rationalize in your super smart brain why this is all okay. Sugar dating might feel like a rush of excitement, an endless stream of long nights, exotic travel, lavish dinners, and an adrenaline-fueled lifestyle that feels like Las Vegas has come home to you. You're caught up in a whirlwind of pleasure, constantly chasing the next high through the next sugar baby or sugar baby rush in the bowl. However, while these experiences can be thrilling in the short term, they don't contribute to any lasting or meaningful progress in life. You aren't developing meaningful social skills or developing intimate relationships, improving in your sexual skill set, or growing as a man and leaning into your purpose and passions in life. And what's worse, in the sugar infused haze, everyday activities and hobbies can start to lose their appeal. Even people, friends, and people that you know, and other women that you used to like. The things that once brought you joy and fulfillment might seem mundane compared to the thrill of sugar dating. You might find yourself losing interest in pursuits that contribute to your personal growth, such as 
fitness or learning new skills, hobbies, building meaningful relationships with the people in your life. The mindset and attitude that brought you success in life and career is discarded in favor of the instant rush of shopping for a new sugar baby, adding her to cart, and watching that Uber come closer and closer to you on the map with a little smirk on your face. While sugar dating may offer immediate pleasures and gratification, it creates a scenario of guaranteed stagnation in one's personal development and in life and in their relationships. Much like a trust fund baby who gets to enjoy the perks of their parents' money without needing to earn that money of their own volition and effort and sacrifice, you are enjoying the fruits of pleasure and intimacy from women without developing the skills to attract that naturally into your life. Sugar dating creates a deceptive bubble for men, a detachment from reality that prioritizes temporary pleasure over long-term fulfillment. It's like a captivating mirage that distracts you from genuine personal growth and authentic relationships while siphoning your cash balance all at the same time. Instead of enriching your life, this illusory world can leave you isolated, unfulfilled, and stuck in a cycle of pleasure-seeking that is a black hole. Number three, sugar dating produces negative returns and is a losing long-term investment. Proponents of sugar dating may read this headline and scoff claiming, but sugar dating is an investment because it saves me time. On the surface, this seems reasonable enough. After all, if you're a successful man, you likely have more money than time. So it makes sense to leverage your most abundant asset to create the life that you want. But when you dig a little deeper, you quickly realize that this argument doesn't hold much weight. Because ultimately, sugar dating produces negative returns across the board. You aren't building a lasting romantic relationship or a true connection. You aren't achieving any sort of romantic or emotional compound effect as most of these relationships are short-term and don't last. So whatever time it saves you in the short run, it will cost you that much more time and more financial cost in the future. When you layer the potential for drama and stress and professional ruin, if you engage with a sugar baby who has dubious moral standards, then it quickly becomes clear that you aren't saving much at all. Because we both know the truth, if you had the skills necessary to attract and date the type of women you wanted, you wouldn't be using an escort site. The only reason why these sugar dating sites have any appeal is because men want to skip the journey of meeting and attracting women and get the reward without the effort. But like all unearned rewards, it can't last. It's built on a faulty foundation. Sugar dating is kind of like the man who pursues a get-rich-quick scheme because he doesn't want to put in the work to build a lasting real business that adds value. Sure, he might make some money in the short term, but where will he be in years, right? He won't really have any marketable skills, he won't have a responsive audience, he won't have legitimate assets and customers that have compounded over time, and he'll likely be left exactly where he started off, only years older and probably much more miserable because everyone around him used their time to build something that could last. And so he feels even less as time goes on because others have improved. So on the surface, sugar dating is shiny and exciting. You get to bypass all the hard work and all the BS, making the first move, risking rejection, having meaningful conversations, getting to know someone, emotionally investing, caring about her feelings, listening, all that for the instant validation of a beautiful woman around your arm in your bed with just a few DMs and saying yes to her cash allowance. But as they say, easy come, easy go, because you didn't earn the benefits of a real relationship through emotional intelligence and connection and intimacy. It's built upon a faulty foundation, just financial transactions, really, for pleasure. The second that the money dries up or you decide that you don't want to pay for affection anymore and think this is weird and want something more real from her, the woman will simply leave and move on to a man with bigger and a looser wallet. Just like a get-rich-quick scheme, there are no long-term payouts, only costs, a lot of work, and a lot of stress, and a lot of regret. Successful men who have likely achieved their status through wise and strategic long-term investments understand the value of compound interest. But this principle applies not only in the financial sphere, but also in relationships and personal development. The most successful men, men who are consistently growing in every domain of life, 
understand the importance of putting in the work over time for long-term rewards. They know that great relationships require investments of energy, emotional connection, and time over years to bear lasting fruit. They don't want shallow and superficial relationships predicated on financial transactions that as soon as it ends, she disappears. Because they know that underneath that smile, that laugh at every joke that you have and interest in your day is forced. It's acting. It's like she's in theater class. Even worse, the more money you spend, the more emotionally invested that you become, then the harder it becomes to walk away. Therefore, you sink more and more resources and time, energy, money into a losing investment, missing out on all the potential opportunities for real connection, real intimacy, and women who would value you for more than just your wallet and aren't acting their way to another direct deposit. Every dollar and every hour you spend on sugar dating is a dollar an hour that could have been invested into something with real long-term benefits. And I'm not just talking about making more money. For the same amount of money that you spend on hiring a sex worker, you could go on a retreat with like-minded men who push you to improve in your life and relationships. You could hire a coach to help you in your confidence and in your dating life and to be more seductive and attractive, where you would have those skills forever. You could invest in books and courses to develop your social and romantic skills. You could even just spend money on once-in-a-lifetime adventures with friends and family. The list goes on and on for ways to grow and improve, and each of these investments compound in terms of emotional well-being, your health, your wellness, your mood, your attractiveness, your aliveness, your vigor, your masculinity. All of this makes you more attractive to the type of women that you would actually want to share your life with. And this is a point you shouldn't overlook. Investing in yourself not only enhances your own value, but also increases the likelihood of attracting a partner or your existing partner who's going to appreciate you for who you are rather than what you can provide only. Investing into sugar dating, if you can call it investing, just really does the opposite here. So here's a powerful question for you. If you have a daughter or niece, who would you want her to date, okay? The man who spends $5,000 a month to get a 21-year-old to sleep with him, or the man who spends that same money on his health, his career, his education, his travel, uh, hobbies and passions. I mean, just the answer is obvious. So the real question is, is why be the man that you would not want your daughter or niece to date? Why choose to act in a way that repels the very life that you would want most? The world of sugar dating offers a kind of sugar rush, a quick hit of pleasure, AKA dopamine, that leaves you craving for more only to eventually crash and do it all over again. It's an unsustainable investment that in the end may cost you more than just your wallet. It can also take a toll on your emotional well-being and future relationship opportunities. Number four, the distorted lens of sugar dating impacts on future relationships. Over the past few years, psychologists have come forward with more and more research about the dangers of pornography from porn-induced erectile dysfunction to unrealistic expectations to an inability to maintain a long-term relationship. Something as seemingly simple and innocuous as watching people have sex on camera can actually wreck a man's confidence, his sexual performance, and long-term relationship prospects. What happens when a man is able to live out his pornographic fantasies in real life? How much more dangerous is that? How does it affect a man's psyche when Flashing a wad of cash is enough to settle any argument, bypass any no, and get his desires fulfilled. Simply put, the stark contrast between the sugar dating experience and real-world relationships can lead to a skewed perception of what genuine connections entail, ultimately hindering your future romantic opportunities and prospects. In the sugar dating realm, interactions are often marked by a heightened sense of excitement physicality, and playfulness. Sugar babies are incentivized to present themselves as always happy, smiling, and sexually available, catering to your innate desires. This controlled and transactional environment can create unrealistic expectations and distort your understanding of what a genuine real-world relationship looks like. You don't learn how to handle the natural ebbs and flows of the feminine energy. You don't learn how to communicate, share boundaries, and seduce and romance your partner. You develop a rampant sense of entitlement that can break relationships with high-quality women before they even begin as high-quality women will not settle for inexperienced men 
who lack these critical qualities necessary in a relationship, especially as you get older. Real world relationships require patience, effort, and a deeper emotional connection that extends beyond mere financial exchange and the man's professional status. Whereas in sugar dating, that's all that you need. The absence of the constant affirmation and immediate gratification that sugar dating provides can leave you feeling unsatisfied or uninterested in putting in the necessary work to develop a meaningful connection in a real relationship. Moreover, engaging in sugar dating can foster a jaded view of women and relationships in general. The transactional nature of sugar dating can erode your trust and faith in authentic emotional bonds. It's essential to remember that sugar dating represents a small subset of relationships and doesn't reflect the complexities and rewards that come with genuine connections built on trust, mutual respect, and shared values that last a lifetime. Even if you delete your sugar daddy account, the knowing of a convenient platform to meet your sexual needs can pull you right back in. It may lead to a reliance on the instant gratification provided by sugar dating making it more challenging to invest the time and effort required to build real-world relationships, meaning you could get stuck in the sugar bowl for decades. This dependency on sugar dating can create a cycle of emotional detachment, perpetuating the belief that real-world dating and relationships are arduous and unfulfilling in comparison to the sugar dating lifestyle. To establish and maintain healthy, fulfilling relationships in the future, it's crucial to recognize the limitations and distortions inherent in the sugar dating world. This awareness will help you navigate the transition from transactional encounters to genuine connections, fostering a mindset of patience, genuine emotional investment, and a willingness to embrace the complexities of authentic relationships. Ultimately, for the men who want the real thing, the first step is to reclaim your power. And if you're tired of your worth being reduced to your bank balance, you want genuine romance and intimacy, not transactions, you don't want to be that guy who has to buy intimacy and affection. You know, if you're saying no to these things, then it's time to act because there is a path forward. We've got a decade proven solution for men to regain their purpose. And if you're ready to break free, then you can click the link in the description to access the training to uncover the mindsets and strategies to achieve your highest potential and create authentic relationships. So just click the link in the description or go to knowledgeformen.com slash SA. Do that so that you can rise and become the man that you were born to be. So now let's discuss how will sugar dating affect women and their future. To the outside observer, sugar dating, especially for women, seems like something of a fantasy. Sugar babies seem to have it all. They have a large pool of traditional male attention, affection, and boyfriends to choose from through social media and dating apps and just going out to parties, plus an affluent network of sugar daddies who make up for their boyfriend's modest socioeconomic status. The whole plight of the middle class, budgeting, saving, learning, investing, working hard to get ahead, spending most of their money on bills, rejecting mindless consumerism, embracing minimalism, overcoming struggle. These were all trivial matters that the sugar baby could avoid by auctioning herself off to a sugar daddy. With the simple act of creating an account, messaging a dozen or so men, spreading her legs, the adversity to which her mother and grandmother were subjected are all now easily escapable. She could simply monetize her body and get a pass on life's hardships. However, it crossed my mind whether sugar babies had thoroughly contemplated the implications of their choices for the future. Had they considered the potential impact on their future partners or even their current partners for some of these girls if they were discovered? Would they be able to seize their pursuits once their immediate needs were satisfied? Indeed, the allure of quick, untaxed cash can become akin to an addiction. Might they develop an insatiable craving for more money and attention, transitioning from being a sugar baby to then becoming maybe an OnlyFans model, where they're selling now very explicit content of themselves to a global audience? I created a whole three-part docu-series on OnlyFans and its impact on men, women, and relationships. You can click the link in the description below to capture that. But these sugar babies may find themselves chronically single post-sugar baby life, as the quality men that they desire have been claimed by women who eschewed the sugar bowl and embraced more authentic lifestyles that genuinely appeal to these quality men as long-term partners and mothers of their future children. 
Meanwhile, the fleeting value of sugar babies diminishes with time, leaving them with fewer quality men who would still hold interest in them since they sold their youth away to the highest bidder or sugar daddy. Would she inevitably find herself alone at intimate social events, unable to bring her secret decades older sugar daddy to family gatherings, weddings of friends and family, or the birthday celebrations throughout her 20s and early 30s? As she ages and her sugar daddies gradually stop responding, would she encounter difficulties forging a new career, having invested little time in personal growth or acquiring marketable skills? Would she be left with limited employment options that pale in comparison to the easy income she enjoyed as a sugar baby? Ultimately, would this lifestyle provide nothing more than a fleeting short-term high soon to be replaced by a fresh wave of younger sugar babies entering the sugar bowl? attracting the attention of the limited pool of real sugar daddies. And the more I thought about it, the more I began to wonder late at night, where does this dark and deep rabbit hole really go for women and for men? Because every time that I refreshed my browser on Seeking, I saw new sugar babies being born who had decided to now auction themselves off to sugar daddies. Rather than making money by working a career, completing their college degree, or finding a quality man to date and marry and eventually have a family with. The Generation Z and millennial environment that we find ourselves in incentivizes women to go all in on the quick cash of new age prostitution fueled by materialism, consumerism, and exotic lifestyles driven by an ego galvanizing social media infused generation. Many women don't want to wait until their 30s and 40s to finally become financially capable and sacrifice their youth. They, they want the lifestyle now and at any cost. So why gamble and wait until old age to enjoy a better life and luxury lifestyle when she can sell her time and her body to a sugar daddy and get it now? And so I couldn't help but wonder what the feminists marching down the streets of Washington DC and on college campuses around the nation in the late 60s would have thought about sugar dating? Or was this the type of self-empowerment that they'd actually fought hard to achieve? Political, social, and sexual liberation was earned through decades of hard-earned struggle and political injustices. And today, for a growing number of young women, financial liberation is only a few messages, dates, and panty drops away. Yet for women, just like for men, there's a dark and dangerous underbelly to the prospect of sugar dating that few women realize until they're fully submerged in the sugar bowl. Number one, the fool's gold of sugar dating. On the surface, the value proposition of sugar dating for women seems like a no brainer, okay? From rolling around in exotic cars, their rent is paid, premium dining experiences, designer clothes, to once in a lifetime trips and monthly cash allowances, she can have it all and decide she won't even have to sleep with half the men paying her, right? But in truth, the realities of being a sugar baby are much harder, more stressful, and far less glamorous. Beyond the amount of time, effort, and energy required to garner the attention of a worthwhile sugar daddy, the competition is fierce, and the amount of time required to message, connect with, date, and finally woo a prospective sugar daddy who hopefully is the real deal is emotionally and mentally draining. Because the inconvenient truth for the modern sugar baby is this. There are far more young, attractive women than high status and financially successful men. In other words, in the real world, she is higher value than men. But in the sugar bowl, she is lower value than a real sugar daddy. Okay, most of the guys on there are fraudulent. Most of the guys on there do not make the income or have the net worth that they put. There's no verification to that, okay? For the women, there's no verification. You can put a million dollars, you could say you're worth uh, $500 million, there is no verification. Even women who weren't born with a perfectly symmetrical face or conventionally attractive body can use shortcuts like plastic surgery, fake hair, eyelashes, uh, fake lips, Botox, diet pills to achieve the look that many sugar daddies desire. Yet. For a man to have the type of financial success necessary to support a sugar baby and not fret about it often requires decades of concentrated effort, discipline, and focus, making these types of men far rarer in society. Even rarer still 
are the types of sugar daddies that most women would actually desire. Because even though handsome, emotionally intelligent, and financially successful sugar daddies do exist, they're the rarest of all. Meaning that from the onset of her pursuit, she's fighting a very big uphill battle just to win the attention of a sugar daddy whom she would be potentially repulsed by if it weren't for the size of his wallet and keys to his ride. Ultimately, the slogan of sugar dating, start dating up, is one of the most flagrant forms of false advertising on the internet. Because sugar babies aren't dating up, otherwise they would proudly share photos of these sugar daddies on their social media. The sugar daddy is often a secret that women keep behind closed doors. Sugar babies are often dating a broken or albeit rich or uh, appears to be rich broken man who is using you for your body to fill a void in his life. Very few women actually get what they're searching for out of these arrangements in any long period of time. And a far better slogan would actually be, swim through a sea of broken men, spend countless nights with men you don't want to be seen with in public, and maybe, just maybe, you'll get your rent covered for a little bit, you might get a Louis bag out of this before you just have to do it all over again. From all the firsthand experiences I had, from speaking with other real sugar daddies and from having gone out with many sugar babies, they support these claims. Because as I started to go on dates with these women and ask about their story, I noticed a startling trend. Many of them had been on the site for many months or even many years, and I couldn't help but wonder why. Because if the site worked as advertised, shouldn't they have already found what they wanted and be off living a luxury life with their sugar daddy, bouncing around from Ibiza to Tulum to Miami and rolling up in their favorite venues and style and their perfect designer clothes. But the reality is much different, okay? For most of these women, their experiences are nothing more than short-term flings with nominal financial rewards, right? With shady men. She's constantly looking for the next sugar daddy. And even if she does find one, it's only a matter of time before he replaces her because real sugar daddies want novelty. You're simply his flavor of the week or month and then he's on to the next one. And this often leads women to a place where they lower their standards to be able to get their financial needs met on the platform. And before long, they find themselves on top of a man that they never could have imagined being with and that they would be embarrassed to share with their friends and family about what they're doing to make extra cash. Although some women do make the sugar dating game work for them, far more are left to scrape the bottom of the barrel of salt daddies who fake their status and income and net worth and have no real intention of paying them in any long-term way just to take advantage of these gullible and desperate women who are looking for more money. Resorting to relationships and sexual encounters with men they would never date in normal life for far less than they originally expected. Number two, clear and present dangers. The ugly truth about sugar daddies. Almost none of the guys that I'm familiar with or the seasoned women that I've encountered in the sugar dating world can claim that the men are mentally healthy on this platform. Many of them are plagued with a sense of inferiority. They're chronically single. They never learned real relationship skills. They're basically just workaholics who have money they possess all kinds of countless addictions and uh, a deep emptiness inside of them that drives them toward more and more depraved behavior. And they're using the sugar dating world as an outlet for that. While it's true that there are some healthy men who choose sugar dating simply because they're focused on their professional endeavors and they just don't want any sort of commitment, okay. These men are the exception, not the rule. Being a sugar baby requires women to not only spend time with men they don't know, but to often do so in intimate settings alone, often under the influence of alcohol. We have to think about when a man has already reached the zenith of professional success and he's found that the luxury travel and the achievements are all unfulfilling, he's often in a dark and dangerous place, a place where he wants to explore increasingly depraved fantasies and scenarios that he's likely found online simply to feel something. What's more, these men often operate with a sense of entitlement and an attitude of, I'm going to get what I want from you because I'm paying for it. So it's not about at all about your 
feelings or what you feel is you're comfortable with or if you're safe. If you throw a woman who's desperate for cash, maybe some drugs and alcohol and sexual intimacy into a mix in a private setting, it really creates a dangerous scenario. Number three, planned obsolescence and the new model revolution. The final and most uncomfortable truth that all sugar babies must be aware of is this. At some point, sooner rather than later, their value in the sugar dating marketplace will decrease and they will be left without the same means to support their posh lifestyle. The unavoidable fact is that new sugar babies are entering the game every day. Women who are younger, more attractive, and more willing to do whatever it takes to get the rare sugar daddy and beat you to it. And for the women who are already in the sugar dating ecosystem, it's only a matter of time before they're replaced by what their high rolling sugar daddy perceives to be his new flavor of the week. But what makes this inevitably far more dangerous for women is that more often than not, they don't spend their time as a sugar baby developing marketable skills in preparation for a life without a sugar daddy. They're riding a wave and the value that they are currently offering the marketplace is their youth and sexuality. And political correctness aside, this depreciates with time. Okay, in their late 20s to early 30s, these women will no longer be the sought after commodity in the sugar bowl. And when that happens, they may find it difficult to secure a job that can maintain a lifestyle similar to what their sugar daddy once provided. Sugar dating platforms serve to bridge the gap between upper class older men who are tired of the stress of traditional relationships and the materialism fueled by a generation of young women who grew up on social media willing to trade their bodies for their media-fueled dream of keeping up with the Kardashians. In a generation raised on Fifty Shades of Grey, which is a book that sold over 125 million copies, just think about that for a second, the idea of a young and innocent woman relying on a rich older man abusing her in a secret sex chamber was normalized and even fantasized. The idea of having a sugar daddy is no longer this taboo and dirty thing to keep hidden, but rather an idealized lifestyle that is actively encouraged and promoted by major influencers, musicians, and even mainstream media in America. The more I leaned into this dark and twisted underworld, despite my relatively benign experiences, the more bitter a taste it left in my mouth. It really made me wonder, is traditional dating, love, and romance dead? Has monogamy breathed its last breath with my social media ego-infused generation? All of these questions might sound hyperbolic, the more deeply I dove into the underbelly of the sugar dating world, the more I began to believe they deserved an answer. Gen Z and millennial women are becoming increasingly comfortable monetizing their sexuality, both inside and outside of the sugar dating world. If you don't believe me, just open up Instagram right now and tell me how many photos you can find of women flaunting their bodies to greater extremes to increase likes, followers, and earn sponsorship deals, and even promoting you to go over to OnlyFans. Sugar dating, it seems, is the merging of two separate worlds. It has brought together the transactional aspect of prostitution and combined it with the romantic aspects of traditional dating. And the more I opened my eyes to all of this and paid close attention to the modern hookup culture and dating scene happening all around me, the more I saw my generation knowingly or unknowingly become the harbinger of a pervasive and normalized form of prostitution skillfully masked under the guise of empowerment and dating up. I saw my generation paving the way for widespread, normalized prostitution covered up as empowerment, fueled by materialism, quick pleasure, and an addiction to instant gratification. Women want money to fuel a grander lifestyle, and with the inception of online sugar dating accessible on every smartphone, everyone has the opportunity to live out their hedonistic fantasies in an unregulated sugar bowl happening in every major city across the world. And the more I thought about all this, and the more I wondered if maybe we weren't taking a step backwards, and this is actually only natural for men and women to act this way when given the opportunity. After all, doesn't sugar dating in some sense harken back to a pre-feminism era where dating and relationships were mostly predicated primarily on the exchange of providership and romantic companionship? It seems all but inevitable that some women would disagree with the whole idea of wanting to basically become a man and do what man's roles are. 
and instead would prefer to be taken care of and explore their other passions, hobbies, raise children, their artistic endeavors, instead of being expected to join corporate America and perform at the same rate or higher as men while also juggling motherhood of multiple little ones and also keeping up with society's insane beauty standards. It all seems like a lot, maybe. The fact that there's millions and millions of women across the entire world involved in this suggests that it might be. But that's more of a question for debate, not something that I am stating. Overall, I just didn't imagine that this many women would so willingly throw out what generations before them had fought so hard to achieve for equal opportunity in education and in corporate America. As I grappled with this idea, it got me thinking, is feminism clashing with our evolutionary instincts? Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I buy into this idea or that I want it to be true. However, the meteoric surge of sugar dating and the staggering number of over 40 million people involved in it around the world on just one of the sites, there's countless others, so it certainly throws a few hard-hitting arguments into the mix that might suggest this. I found it interesting that sugar dating sites had effectively served to normalize a light version of prostitution with little legal oversight or political opposition. It makes you wonder if the people in power also use these platforms. Look at it this way. In impoverished third world countries, many women are forced to resort to prostitution to survive and feed their children. They simply have very few if no other alternatives. Yet, despite the necessity of their actions and the atrocious fact that many women are still sold into these types of situations and human trafficking, it's horrible, they still face a lifetime of shame, trauma, and ostracization from society. Yet, in the richest, safest, and most developed countries across the world, a plethora of women, millions of women, with plenty of options for employment, access to higher education, and most of whom have no children. They have willingly entered into prostitution. Women whose parents worked long, hard hours for decades for them to have every possible chance to aspire, to achieve, to excel in life. Yet, these very women, beneficiaries of such selfless sacrifices by their parents and grandparents, have chosen to forego these opportunities preferring instead to sell themselves to spoiling daddy 1969. And for what? Some cash? A Louis bag? A trip to Tulum? This is all going to be worth it at 30, right? With sugar dating, women today can effectively sell themselves without negative social repercussions carried by traditional prostitution, which historically prevented the masses of women from engaging in it. Sugar babies aren't hanging around in some dodgy alley at ungodly hours, rubbing shoulders with drug peddlers and small-time crooks, putting their lives on the line, their safety on the line. They're tucked in bed, scrolling through sugar dating apps, hitting up potential sugar daddies on their phone. They're binging you on Netflix, which is basically about a serial killer, which is a popular show by a lot of young women. They're updating their Insta, or for some of these women, their OnlyFans stories. They got one hand, they have a green smoothie with oat milk, and the other hand, they're popping CBD gummy bears to calm their anxiety. With the lack of social consequences and the barrier to entry as underwhelming as simply entering an email address and clicking register to become an escort, the sugar baby world has been flung wide open to an entire generation hungry to opt out of the traditional career path and opt for a VIP ticket to Coachella. Okay, these women find themselves in a position of receiving what they want, a monthly cash allowance, rivaling corporate executives, right? Their income in exchange for what could essentially be categorized as a form of prostitution. The distinction here lies in the fact that the majority of these women do not resort to such measures out of dire necessity or in a last resort bid to provide for their children. Rather, their motivations stem from a self-serving yearning for a life of opulence, further amplified by the ego-stroking validation derived from flaunting this existence on social media, basking in the approval of an audience, 90% of whom are mere strangers that they would never talk to in real life. 
And this new paradigm has served to progressively but covertly blur the lines between traditional relationships and prostitution by mimicking elements of real romance frequently masquerading under the veneer of empowerment and the auspices of dating up, sugar dating's impact on our generation, unpacking the phenomenon and navigating the future. Over the past several decades, men and women have been systematically but unintentionally brainwashed into what intimacy and romance actually is. Women grew up on Disney movies, right? Rom-coms and romance novels learned to expect a knight in shining armor who would sweep them off their feet, defeat the evil dragon, and carry them away to a nice, wealthy castle where they could live happily ever after, take them out of the plight of the life that they live and into a better life. Meanwhile, you have men who were exposed to pornography at the age of eight, and billion-dollar corporations marketed sexy women in every magazine, every movie, every TV show, shopping mall corner. They were conditioned inversely to expect the women they date to be a sex-hungry freak willing to do anything and everything in her power to pleasure him on command. Needless to say, both men and women have different fantasies about what romance and intimacy is. As age and experience set in, we realized that the Disney romantic fairy tale was a lie. Real sex is nothing like porn and women don't look like the women in the magazines because it's nothing more than Photoshop or AI perfection. In response to the dissolution of their childhood and teenage fantasies, it seems as if, quite suddenly, millions of women had decided to become undercover prostitutes, or escorts, or sugar babies. Sugar babies supposedly get to live like a princess and have their materialistic dreams come true, and sugar daddies get to build a harem of attractive women willing to do anything and everything he asks in exchange for, of course, a lot of cash. Interesting how all that played out. And I know that prospect itself is disturbing enough, yet the most disturbing part of my experience and research, however, was not the mere transactionalization of sex and romance, but rather the deceptive nature of the platform. Many of the women that I met up with through these sugar dating sites and my experience of what they had shared with me, their peers on the site, I would say at least 20% of the women on there voluntarily confessed that they were in a relationship and didn't want to be seen in public uh, or certain parts of town. They wanted to strictly meet up at my home or only in certain areas of the town. Many of these women did have boyfriends. They had husbands and yet they hide their actions from the people they claim to love, promise to be truthful to and live a double life. To me, that is really where the problem really arises. One of the most uncomfortable facts of this situation is that most men don't even have the slightest clue that this dark underworld exists in their own communities, not even the police, the education system, or community leaders. Like, no one is talking about this. And many men who are watching this right now could be dating or even be in a relationship with a woman who is actively selling herself to older rich men on the sly. There are millions of women on this platform, so it seems to be this twisted and utilitarian form of a relationship where things like love and intimacy are discarded in lieu of cold, hard, calculated, logical financial transactions, a catalyst for indulging in our most basic biological impulses for sex and survival, while ignoring the once honored commitments in our life. And that was the ugly, dehumanizing truth of the sugar dating world. A world where it becomes all too easy to forget that the person in front of you is actually a human being with the story and feelings and emotions and dreams and fears just like everyone else. So today, I would estimate based off the population data earlier in this video that comes from the Seeking site itself and the US Census uh, research that fewer than 10% of the female population between the age of 18 and 44 have or have had sugar daddies. As the trend grows and becomes more widely accepted, those numbers will increase. And to add fuel to the fire, sugar baby coaches, books, podcasts, YouTube channels, blogs, and live conferences now exist teaching newbie sugar babies how to essentially extract more cash from sugar daddies to give you an idea of where all this is going. 
Will the day come when it's just as common for an attractive 20-something to have a sugar daddy as it is for her to have an app like Tinder, which is just another tool to meet men? Will it be viewed as a rite of passage for young women into adulthood, similar to going to prom? I got my first sugar daddy. As I consider my own experiences and the sugar dating stories I've heard from from the countless uh, other men that I've spoken to and the women that I have encountered, I couldn't help but wonder what the long-term implications of this trend is going to be. Is sugar dating simply a convenient service to expedite the speed with which individuals can meet their true needs? Or is this merely a band-aid solution to deeper political, societal, and economic problems facing men and women today? Or is it something more sinister and nefarious that will result in a generation of hedonistic epicureanism and the actual demise of our society's moral framework that we work so hard to build for centuries. Only time will tell. For now, I think what men can do is reclaim their power and work to create an empowering future. Because I don't think that men want to be a part of a world where men are only worth their bank balance and women are merely just used for sex only, where the gap between men and women just keeps widening by the year, where the beauty of romance and sex and intimacy just boils down to nothing more than a soulless transaction devoid of any emotion and connection. And I don't think men want to be that guy who can't attract a high quality woman on his own merit and is left with no other choice but to shell out cash for what he wants. If your answer is a solid hell no, then this is your call to action. If you've had it up to here with the mundane life of distractions, vices, and numbing the pain, and you're craving for a more fulfilling life, a more purposeful life, and having a higher quality relationship, there is a way out, okay? This is something that I've been working on for about a decade, tested with thousands of men at this point, and proven to help a man reclaim his sense of strength and purpose in the world. But the ball is in your court to seize this opportunity, to break free from the sleepwalking state of the masses who are mindlessly chasing pleasure and instant gratification at every turn. Your first move? Check out the link in the description for a training that I've crafted on the current state of masculinity and get the foundation that you need to evolve into the strongest version of yourself, to create the types of relationships that you want and really just skip all this BS happening all around us and get a clear cut solution. So men, make a stand right here, right now, not to squander this opportunity not to fall prey to the vices and immediate gratification that's eating men's souls alive. So click the link in the description below. You can start the training and rise to become the man that you were destined to be. Or you can go to knowledgeformen.com slash S A. I put a tremendous amount of time and research and work into creating this content for you to consume so we can spread an awareness around a really troubling issue that is impacting every major city in the world. And most of the content around sugar dating is about how to be a sugar baby, right? How to get the most out of your sugar daddy and how to use it. So I'd really appreciate if you would like this video so that it can tell YouTube that this is this is a good quality video and you like this and you, you wanna spread this message. And I think together we can make a more positive impact in the world. And so we shall make a difference here. Thank you. Until next time, guys.